On the news, Tinubu congratulates Okpaibolo, says victory in Edo elections, a challenging call to service. Edo Governor Obaseki conduct, condemns conduct of elections, encourages aggrieved parties to seek redress in court. And court dismisses suits to remove Ganduje as APC chairman. Thank you for joining us on News Now on TV 360 Nigeria. I'm Simi President Balantinubu has congratulated Monday Okwebolo, the All Progressive Congress APC candidate, in Saturday's Edo State Governorship election on his victory at the polls, urging him to see his victory as a challenging call to service. Okwebolo was declared the winner by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, on Sunday, having defe defeated other contenders for the position. The president further encouraged Okwebolo to demonstrate magnanimity by reaching out to his political rivals and uniting the people of Edo State to ensure its development. Tinubu also urged all those aggrieved by the election outcome to seek redress through the legal channels. Earlier on, I spoke with an election observer, Nelson Ekujumi, who gave an analysis of the electoral process in Edo State. The conduct of the election in uh... Uh, that is the 2024 gubernatorial election, which took place on Saturday, the 21st of September, was a very peaceful one, generally. All over, all over the states, we have uh, 18 local governments. The election went on peacefully and successfully. Uh, INEC personnel arrived early at polling stations, uh, except for some few ones uh, where there was late arrival of uh, polling officers as well as materials. And the uh, INEC in its tradition extended the closing hour of such stations beyond the statutory 2.30 p.m. close of polls. And um, INEC personnel must be commended for showing a proper understanding of their functions as well as the uh, equipment they came with. We had situations whereby elect, uh, voters didn't spend more than three minutes maximum at, uh, to, at the polling stations to cast to be accredited and cast your votes. The process went on seamlessly. And that, that has even been attested to by uh, ma the major parties, uh, gubernatorial uh, candidates, uh, including the winner of the election, the APC gubernatorial candidate. The electorate came out in, in, in fairly good numbers. Uh, we must also recognize that uh, he trained on that day. So that train could have affected the turnout. Then the violence that preceded the election, the threats of war by some of the stakeholders um, could have also affected the turnout in, in making the turnout not to be higher than what we witnessed on Saturday. Uh, apart from being an observer, I also monitored the reports via the media. Uh, there were attempted violence in maybe one or two places, but uh, the security agencies responded swiftly. You know, this is an election that has taken place in the state uh, that has 18 local governments. So it is not unexpected that some persons will try to be funny. But the security deployments, both motorized and uh, roadblocks, as well as uh, at the polling stations, went a long way in curtailing those who were thinking that uh, they want to, you know, perpetrate their uh, vocation of causing. Uh, violence at the elections. So by and large, even if there were, if there was violence in those uh, one or two places, like I said, I listened to on radio, uh, you can be rest assured that uh, it was too insignificant, you know, to taint the credibility of the election. Meanwhile, Governor Godwin Obaseki of uh, Edo State has condemned the conduct of Saturday's governorship election but has called for calm and subtly encouraged aggrieved parties to seek redress in court. Obaseki's candidate, Aswe Gudalo of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, lost the election to the Yo Progressive Congress APC candidate, Amande Okwebolo, in the keenly contested election. The governor, whose second term will end on November 12, painted a picture of democracy coming under assault in the manner of the conduct of the election. Obaseki had alleged bias of the police and the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, in the lead-up to the election, which he says was marked by violence and blame trades. In the last few months, 
The various political parties have embarked on very rigorous campaigns to sell their respective candidates for the office of governor to the people of Edo State in an exercise which came to a climax. The attractive thing about democracy is the power it bestows on the people to choose who governs them. Therefore, when this power is blatantly seized from the people, it is not just a tragedy, but a travesty of democracy. Regrettably, the outcome of the September 21st governorship election appears to have daunted the spirit of many Edo people who feel powerless in the face of the brute force of the institutions that are supposed to protect them. It is therefore understandable that many people feel sad and aggrieved. But in the midst of this despair, I'm urging all my fellow Edo citizens to maintain calm and not resort to violence and the destruction of property in spite of this provocation. Peace and justice will always win at the end. And this is my prescription to all the good people of Edo State who feel vexed and violated at this time. Clearly, it is obvious to the least discerning the amount of impunity and reckless disregard for processes and law that was displayed in this gubernatorial election. In a democracy, there are always safeguards for addressing grievances. And we hope that all those affected will seek resolution for this blatant disregard of law and process. With this in mind, I implore all Edo people to go about their lawful businesses and rest assured of the commitment of our government to your well-being and security. Well, let's discuss the outcome of the Edo governorship election further. I'm joined on the news by political affairs analyst Charles Ijeho. Thank you very much, sir, for your time. Now, what's your take on the outcome of the governorship election in Edo State? Did you expect the results as they are now? Well, I wouldn't say I expected it. Uh, but but I, I, I think uh, uh, just like Nessie Kujimi said, my, it's also my friend, that uh, we didn't witness any violence because if you recall that the days and weeks um, leading to election, there were apprehension, of course, that the the um, election might be mired by violence. But people were speaking daggers and all that. Well, we're happy that uh, they didn't use any. Uh, they spoke daggers and used none. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy. I am a do. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm proudly a do. And uh, this is the very first time I couldn't go back home to, um, you know, uh, witness that election to also uh, do what I really do by covering it and also sending it back to Lagos. Uh, so, but uh, for me, I think uh, it is, uh, when, when I met my, uh, when, I, when I said exactly what I expected, I mean, that, that meant to be seen. But again, you have uh, two uh, two schools uh, in this in this election. There are, there's a school that, uh, you know, uh, the school is happy because the election went the way of their expectation. And then there's the other school, like, I mean, that is led by the governor who just spoke, that's also aggrieved that um, it's a, what they call a rip of democracy. But I also asked if the pendulum has swung, sorry, the pendulum has swung he is, uh, the way of the PDP, would the governor had uh, made that uh, uh, broadcast to say that's uh, a rip of democracy, but so that, that that's the like how it is. If uh, the results did not meet the expectations of people, they are aggrieved. They feel aggrieved. But if it met the expectations of people, they are happy because they will say that uh, the best that ever happened to them in terms of this election. Well, that's Godwin Obaseki. While condemning the outcome of the election, like we earlier saw, has subtly encouraged aggrieved parties to seek redress in court. Now, judging from past elections in the state, do you foresee a long legal battle going forward? Well, um, it, it, that's, that's where I have a problem. You know, um, I, I just wish that Aswelime Iwodalo, the one you call Aswe Iwodalo, would pick his phone and call the winner or the one that been declared by INEC has been the winner of the election, just like uh, President Jonathan did in 2015 to douse all tensions in, in the land. I wish it could uh, be spot manly to just call him to say, I congratulate you, my brother. Both of them are Esa, Esa, Esa. I even though they are all Bini, uh, sorry, they are all Edo. 
there is not a sound. So I, I think that's the way to go rather than uh, the allowing the court to be the 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 uh, the arbiter. Well, the court is always the arbiter. But again, when the court steps outside its boundary of being an arbiter, and the court is now the one that is choosing, that is determining uh, who the outcome, uh, what the outcome will be, and uh, who the eventual winner will be, then I have a problem because the um, the prop that's the the power to choose a, a leaders resides squarely on the electorate. So when you when you now you sub that power from the electorate and you transfer same by default to the court. There is a problem because when, as um, as uh, the governor has said, that people should seek redress in court, there is going to be a long battle as a witness. It's going to go to the tribunal. Tribunal will go to the appeal court. Appeal court will go to the 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 the, the supreme court. But I don't know how long it's going to take. Even though they are going to be saying they want to expedite action on it, it won't last le less than six months. Uh, six months of a uh, waste of time, waste of uh, all resources. So I would rather that um, as elimination would allow the PDP. Uh, should call the 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 one that be declared by by a win, uh, winner by INEC that's uh, Monday Central Monday Opebolo, and then congratulate and say okay we are going to be very uh, well better than now in the next election. That's what I think they should do. Not uh, this one. Uh, they are going to and they are going to be handing over the power to choose lead, uh, the leaders to the courts. Well, we'll see what happens in the coming days. Public Affairs Analyst, Political Affairs Analyst, Rada Charles Deho, thank you very much, sir, for lending your thoughts. Moving on, the Federal High Court Abuja has dismissed a suit seeking the removal of Abdullahi Ganduje as the National Chairman of the All Progressives Congress, APC. The presiding judge, Justice Echo, held that the APC North Central Group is not a juristic, uh, juristic person and not registered in law and therefore has no legal power and capacity to file the suit. The judge also held that the plaintiff failed to explore the internal mechanism for peaceful resolution of issues before rushing to the court. Justice Nyangako further ruled that the appointment of officers for APC by its National Executive Committee is an internal affair of the party which no court can interfere in. Still on party politics, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar has backed plans to unseat the acting national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Umar Damagam. Since taking on the role of acting national chairman of the PDP after the removal of Iyotia Ayu, stakeholders have criticized Damagam for failing to implement essential reforms to revitalize the party. So far, the move to remove Damagam has divided the 13 state governors elected on the uh, PDP platform, while seven governors led by Bauchi State Governor Bala Mohamed are pushing for Damagam's removal. Four pro-Damagam governors led by Oyo State Governor Shei Makinde support his retention. Reacting to this development on the station's flagship program, DG 360, members of the PDP accused the party leadership of failing to address the crisis appropriately. The point is, the party is sharply divided between Wiki and Atiku. And my argument is, how do you fight somebody who is aggrieved? Who feel that there has been a kind of injustice along the line? Who think the party has not observed the constitution it professed to have given to the party? And I don't think the governors, the BOT, and everybody are going through the right way to resolve this issue. They are all creating more to the crisis, as far as I am concerned. Hmm. Wike is ready to wrestle the party to the ground. And the, the people who are fighting him are not seeing, seeing the, the, the problem ahead because Wike is ready to fight them to finish. And I think the only way out hmm. or the only solution which I know can solve all this problem is personal ambition and the uh, presidential ambition coming up very soon because we can see the sign that Atiku is still interested in Absolutely. contesting or, mm. uh, or becoming the candidate. That's true. And we can of the opinion that you cannot wreck me and I will look elsewhere while you take the ticket. What you did for me, I will always do it. You, you do me, I do you. That is that's the problem. Damagu is not the issue, if you ask me, because we will believe that Damagu is handling the affairs of the party constitutionally and progressively as we see it to be. We just know that some people who have certain interests 
are not happy with the way things is going or things are going, and they are bent on you know making Damago the issue. But if you want to remove Damago, what is what does the party the constitution say mm. in the in, in this situation? If you want to remove Damago, we have to go to a convention. We have to go to a convention. Why is it hard for us to go to a convention and elect a new chairman of the party if you truly want that? Dam Damago has said he's not even happy acting as a, as, a, as a chairman of the party at the moment because the issues are too many. But we need to head to a convention and then choose a chairman of the party. That is what some of us are leading to as a process that it should be. But if we want to do it in a kangaroo manner, what we are only going to do is to deepen the issues in the party and it's not going to help us in any way. So Wiki is not the problem. Damago is not the problem. We just have people who want to, you know, fight their own interests ahead of 2027. Operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, have intercepted a total of 25 million pills of Tapendatol and 350,000 bottles of codeine-based syrup at the Tinkamport complex in Lagos. According to the spokesman for the NDLEA, Femi Babafemi, the seizures totaling 16 billion, 175 million naira were made on Tuesday 17th and Friday 20th September 2024 from three containers which had been on the watch list of the agency following processed intelligence. The seizures are among many made in the previous week as part of its efforts against drug trafficking in Nigeria. TV360's Victoria Conde has more. The tap and tattle consignment packed in 500 cartons as well as 175,000 bottles of Barcadin cough syrup with codeine packed in 875 cartons were found in separate containers on September 17, while the third container containing 175,000 bottles of CSC cough syrup with codeine was examined on Friday, September 20. According to the NDLEA spokesman, the NDLEA had requested for 100% joint examination of the shipments with men of the Niger Custom Service and other security agencies. In the same vein, operatives of the Lagos State Strategic Command of the agency arrested an 80-year-old Ari Mushojobi with 14 kilograms of cannabis at his home in Yanopaja area. The octagonarian claimed he has been in the business of selling illicit drugs for 25 years. NDLE operators in Lagos also raided two homes of a community leader and Sakinyama of Badagri West LCDA Bashir Tauba, where a total of 226 kilograms of cannabis was recovered from his two wives and son. On September 15, NDLE operatives arrested a 38-year-old drug mill or car for Ifya in Anthony at the Malam Aminu Kano International Airport Kano while attempting to board a Qatar Airlines flight to Iran via Doha with 76 wraps of cocaine in his stomach. After three days of observation, Okafo excreted the 76 pellets of the ingested cocaine weighing 1.267 kilograms. Suspects were also intercepted at Rivers, Kogi, Kwara, and Niger states with huge quantities of cannabis sativa, several tablets of diazepam and tramadol, several amples of tramadol injection, and bottles of cough syrup with codeine. While commending the officers and men of various commands of the agency for the arrest and seizures, Chairman Chief Executive Officer of the NDLEA, retired Brigadier General Mohamed Bubamara, says efforts towards drug supply reduction and demand reduction are well appreciated. Victoria Akonde, TV360 Lagos. We'll take a break here. Coming up on the news, Lebanon says 100 people killed as Israel launches will return shortly. Welcome back. Here's a recap of our top stories. 
President Bola Tinubu has congratulated Monday Okpebolo, the All Progressives Congress APC candidate, in the Saturday's Edo State Governorship election on his victory at the polls, urging him to see his victory as a challenging call to service. Okpebolo was declared the winner by the Independent National Electoral Commission INEC on Sunday, having defeated other contenders for the position. The president further encouraged Okpebolo to demonstrate magnanimity by reaching out to his political rivals and uniting the people of Edo State to ensure its development. We also told you that Governor Godwin Obaseki of Edo State has condemned the conduct of Saturday's governorship election but called for calm and subtly encouraged aggrieved parties to seek redress in court. Obaseki's candidate Aswe Gudalo of the People's Democratic Party PDP lost the election to the All Progressives Congress APC candidate Monde Opebolo in the keenly contested election. The governor, whose second term will end on November 12, painted a picture of democracy coming under assault in the manner of the conduct of of the election. In case you missed any of our news bulletins or for more updates, you can catch us on Limex World TV and AVO TV or log on to our website on www.tv360nigeria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram and YouTube at TV360Nigeria or download our mobile app on Google Play Store, Huawei App Gallery and Apple Store. On Facebook, we're TV360 Online. more stories in business let's join joy uche jim who has the latest what's happening joy thank you simi well on business the petrol pricing war between dangote refinery and petrochemical company and the nigeria national petroleum corporation limited has been a major talking point in the country experts say the disagreement shows a continued lack of clarity over market demands speaking on tv 360 nigeria oil and gas experts david yere says contrary to the expectations of nigerians production of petrol in nigeria by dangote refineries will not bring down the price of the commodity in the country if you check the previous record you'll find out that i think the cost of bringing one liter of pms to nigeria is about 1117 naira per liter that's what it costs nmpc to bring petrol to nigeria but if dangote what coming on stream supposed to reduce that procurement costs from 1117 naira that's any eliminating the importation cost, the cost of logistics. So it's going to be, it's going to reduce the cost of importation, but it's not going to actually reduce the pump price because NFPC have fixed this pump price below their landing cost of petrol. Some time ago, the coordinating minister of the economy said they're going to spend uh, some trillion, say about 4 point something trillion of Naira to subsidize fuel. They, they are built into that situation that right from the time where that the president said uh, the era of subsidy is gone, it has not been gone. They have been subsidizing petroleum products since they came into this uh, uh, into in, into the seat of power. We'll take a short break and return with stock market reports. Welcome back. Nigeria's stock market started the week on a high note thanks to some big winners like Floor Mills and FCMB Group. The overall market climbed a bit by 0.14% and stocks like Flower Mills, Fidelity Bank and FCMB Group were among the significant contributors to the market's rise, with FCMB Group leading the gainers with a 10% share price appreciation closing at 8.8 Naira. Now at the end of the first weekday of trading on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, a total of 410 million shares in 10,669 deals corresponding to a market value of over 5.5 billion Naira were traded 
market. And globally, the European shares closed higher on Monday as a soft business activity reading strengthening the case for more monetary policy easings by the European Central Bank this year. The US Dow Jones, however, did not enjoy the same bullish close. Now, in the foreign exchange market, the Naira traded at 1,665 Naira against the US dollar on the black market. The British pound is valued at 2,250 Naira, while the euro stands at 1,814 Naira on the black market. That is on business and stock market updates. Back to you, Simi, for the rest of the news. Thank you very much, Joy. And on the foreign scene, uh, the Israeli military says it struck 300 targets on Monday in Lebanon in one of the most intense barrages of airstrikes in nearly a year of fighting against the Hezbollah militant group. According to the Lebanese Health Ministry, 100 people have been killed and more than 400 wounded in what is described as the deadliest day in Lebanon since the conflict started in October. Before the escalation, beginning with a wave of pager explosions on Tuesday, around 600 people have been killed in Lebanon since October, mostly fighters, including more than 100 civilians. And on sports, the 2024 All-Africa University Games, co-hosted by the University of Lagos, Unilag and Lagos State University, Lasu, officially commenced on Saturday, September 22, in, grand, in a grand ceremony at Unilag's Sports Centre. Thousands of athletes from various African universities gathered for the 11th edition of the highly anticipated event. Speaking at the opening ceremony, the Vice Chancellor at the University of Lagos, Falashade Ogushola, said FASU provides opportunities for closer interaction among Vice Chancellors beyond academics and research, a fit which she said must be leveraged for continental development. We have been guided by the need to ensure that athletes and participants are comfortable and teacher access to our determination to host games that will be a reference point in the history of this competition. To the athletes who have converged on campus from all over Africa, I salute your courage and doggedness as I congratulate you for making it this far. It is symbolic of the Africa that we want, an Africa that cooperates, an Africa that collaborates, an Africa that moves things forward together in great team spirit. So today we mark great collaboration, great team spirit, we mark the spirit of Africa, we mark the youth of Africa who will take us forward. So I'm going to ask each and every one of you to compete with the best in that you have, but to do it with friendship and love. I'm asking you to come together and move this continent forward. So sports director of sports defense headquarters, Air Vice Marshal Abidemi Marquez has disclosed that about 1,600 athletes will compete in the forthcoming Armed Forces Games 2024 between September 23 and 27, 2024 in Kaduna. The director of sports at defense headquarters and chairman of the organizing committee disclosed this at a press conference over the weekend in Kaduna. He explained that the objectives of the Games are to enhance military professionalism through sports, promote unity and uh, Commander Rai among military personnel and select the best athletes to represent Nigeria at the African Military Games. The Games will feature 19 sports events including football, basketball, volleyball and athletics. Well, that's it on News Now. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again next time.